What's up, catfish people? Hope everybody is doing good, and I hope that the chat's working today. I tried going live the other day, and for some reason the chat uh, was not working, couldn't see anything. Uh, I just saw some little message about a chat thing. So uh, if you jump in there in the next couple of minutes, say hey in the chat. I wanna see if I see you. Boom! Chunky Cats Catfish is in, Cotton Grimes is in. Good, I can see the chat now, that's awesome. Catfish Clothing is there, uh, sitting at the airport. Uh, it's funny, Matt from Catfish Clothing is uh, about three miles away from me that way at the airport getting ready to depart. The problem is he is sitting on the wrong side of the airplane. If he can get his seat changed to the left side of the plane, uh, A, B, or C, uh, he can see me. He's going to be going south of here and they're going to depart on 3-6 left and turn left and he should be able to see me where I'm at. But. He's on the wrong side of the plane, so he's going to be looking at Lake Norman. So, hey, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, the fishing is not good. It's uh, it's continuing to be bad. Uh, you guys have some videos to look forward to of bad fishing that I'm putting together. Uh, three fish today, which is one more than I caught yesterday. I only caught two yesterday. So, uh yeah, it's, uh, it's tough, 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 tough. Somebody killed a 10-pointer the other day. Hunter B says he killed a 10-pointer. You must be hunting in Alabama or somewhere. Somewhere it's got one of them long, long seasons. Uh, our deer season is way behind us, almost a month now. And uh, our deer hunting is gone. Yes, Mike Chavez, uh, fishing is better than no fishing. So I am blessed and thank God that I'm able to be out here and uh, able to fish. So it's actually good weather. Uh, it's overcast. It's not that cold today. Uh, water temperatures remain chilly. It's down 49. Um, you know, we got air temperatures in the 50s right now. So it's, uh, it's, it's comfortable temperatures. Uh, it's just the fishing uh, with the lake being the way it is and the water. It's, it's, it's just very unstable. Uh, so, Douglas, uh, sorry I couldn't give you any more information on water. I haven't been down there fishing any, but yeah, that lake is, uh, it's in this chain of lakes and I know they're trying to drop it to its, uh, oh, Palmetto Cats, thank you, man. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. I'm much appreciated. All of the money and donations here just go back into camera gear and live streaming time, uh, which is not free. <laughs> and, uh, bandwidth and all that kind of stuff so it's much appreciated know that uh i don't get to stop and get a whopper with that it actually goes back into the channel so uh yeah camera gear all that kind of stuff so uh it's uh much appreciated thank you very much but yeah the uh uh fishing on watery watery they've dropped it a bunch i looked at the lake level this morning and it's down to his winter pool level which is pretty low it's about two feet below what it normally is and uh Watery is a weird one in that it has no floodgate, so uh, and it has limited hydro production ability. So they have to that lake just basically goes until it starts spilling over the top of the dam, and uh, it's hard for them to get water out of that one quickly. It's pretty much the uh, I heard a rod crack. It's pretty much the last one in the Duke Power chain of lakes before it gets to Santee Cooper. So. Uh, it's down, stuff's coming out of here. I'm in clean water today. Uh, you can see behind me, it's good looking water. Uh, this is stuff coming out of Mountain Island Lake. And uh, they're just pumping it through, trying to get those upper lakes on down. So we had current earlier when I first got out here. Uh, first place I anchored up, I caught some, a couple of fish, boom, boom. Thought it was onto something. Water started slowing down. They've got the water turned off now. I got a feeling it's gonna come back on here at some point, so uh, anyway. Whisker time fishing. Uh, thanks for the line info the other day. Sure thing, dude. Uh, that's kind of the purpose of uh, the channel is just to get info out there. I know, uh, uh, you know, the stuff I use is my opinion and I usually tell you why I use it and why I like it and why I think it's the best for what I do. But you know, everybody fishes different and uh, fishes different places, different ways. And uh, you kind of, take all of it and put it together and figure out what's going to work best for you. So that's what I always advise people. It's time for a haircut. Look at that hair. It's getting long on the sides. Yeah, it's time for a haircut. Yeah. So Anyway, uh, which do you rather, I assume you're saying, which would I rather do, hunt or fish? I think you're asking me. 
That's a good question. Uh, I like them both. Uh, luckily, deer season is only good hunting for about two months here, so that's when I spend my time doing it. You know, kind of October, November, you don't see me out here soon or, or out here much. So uh, I love deer hunting, very passionate about it. Uh, totally become consumed with it when it's deer season, but I do love fishing too. Uh, fishing, I can talk, uh, I can move around, I can eat when I want to. Uh, pack up and move if things ain't going right. You can do that deer hunting, but it's usually uh, not that smart of a move. So I said, I have a Carolina skiff. Would you place your rod holders any way different if I had it to do over with? Narc Supervisor, that's an interesting name. Uh, no, and I'll be honest with you. I, this is the kind of the second incarnation of what I had. I had them mounted on the rails here. Uh, I'll show you real quick. You can actually still see i had them on the rails you can still see right there i had the uh, rocket launcher types which were on here and uh had them there and what did i have back here i think i had one monster rod holder on each side back there and uh yeah these were cool they worked uh the problem was getting in and out it was kind of a pain and uh I don't know that I do anything different uh as I've said before if you watch any of my videos I'm not a big fan of the rod bar across the back. Uh, nothing wrong with that. If you like it, that's fine. Uh, for me, it's a, uh, it, I don't know, it just kind of gets in the way of everything. I was back here having to wrestle with the fish uh, I caught just a few minutes ago that kind of got under the uh, anchor ropes. I was having to do some finagling to let it drop down and that's a pain in the butt if you got a rod rack in the way. Uh, with the way I run planer boards, if you've seen those videos, if not, I've got one coming out actually next week on some new planer boards I was trying out. Uh, the uh, way I swim them off the side, it's funny, I don't even fish rods out the back when I'm running planer boards anymore. So, anyway. Uh, Palmetto Cats, do I do YouTube full time? No, I do not do full YouTube full time. Uh, long, 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 long way from that. It's, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a passion of mine. I enjoy it. Uh, I uh, it's a little more than a hobby, uh, but yeah, not full time by any means. A long way before that will ever happen. So, uh, Dieter also does boat commercials. Funny story. Let me tell you all the story on that. So, uh, I was meeting with those guys to shoot that stuff for them. Uh, it's a boat dealer that I may be partnering with to do some promotional work. And I was going to have some of their people do the voiceover part. I was shot all the video for it. And uh, back in the day, I used to do a ton of cop car commercials, the dollar a holler, as we would call them. Uh, the El Cheapo car commercials that you see during the news every night. So anyway, I knew the basic format. We didn't want to do that, but I knew the bullet points to get in there. So anyway, they had some stuff. You basically need to get that stuff to Facebook for about 45 seconds to a minute is about all you can do. So... They had some stuff, didn't really work out. I said, give me a minute, let me write something. Wrote something real quick on my phone. Came back and read it back to him and like, my real TV voice talking like this. So, uh, Zach basically said, you're gonna do it. You're gonna voice it. I, 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 you do it, you sound fine. So anyway, I ended up voice tracking a uh, boat commercial that some of y'all may have seen if you're in this area. Uh, it ended up they ended up on YouTube or Facebook. So anyway, Colton Grimes, thank you, Betty. Another one uh, making a contribution there to the channel. Much appreciated. Like I said earlier, uh, all that money is uh, not going to uh, partying and hard living. It goes back into the channel, and uh, it's uh, like I was saying earlier. There's stuff, the bandwidth for this, the uh, the uh, time there on the whole data plan, all that. It all takes money to do it, and that's where the stuff goes to. So, uh, much appreciated. I appreciate that. It's going to a good cause, uh, keeping the channel going. <laughs> so, if you made a contribution, you obviously must like it, and I do appreciate it. So, the uh, bringing up the date, anybody that came in late, uh, we're not catching a lot of fish. I've caught three. It's the old fish counter. Three. Um, I'm just anchoring up, hitting some spots. Probably would be drifting today, but my trolling motor battery is shot. It is not recycling and recharging. It's not holding a charge. So uh, it's uh, time for a new one. That one, uh, I typically, and I, people have asked me about trolling motor batteries, I typically buy Walmart batteries. Um, 
They're nothing fancy. I can get about two years out of them. I fish about 100, 125 days a year. I can get about two years out of them. Uh, this one was one that I bought at Sam's, decided I was gonna try. It's a Duracell, which if any of y'all know anything about acid batteries, there's not that many people that actually make them. So I'm not sure who actually made those, uh, but it got to, I'm two months from being at the two year mark on it. So it didn't really, really hold. Well, I don't know, that's a bad average. I get some that go two years, some a little bit longer. So Whisker Sticks jumped in with a little donation to the channel. Much appreciated there, buddy. Uh, Whisker Six, I'm actually going to be talking about in a video that I've got to shoot probably next week or a week after that on fishing lights. Just some of the different fishing lights out there. I've got three different fishing lights now at the house, Whisker Sticks being one of them, and they all have kind of different purposes. And uh, kind of going to go over them, uh, what they are. Uh, if you don't know who Whisker Sticks are, they'll be at the uh, Catfish Conference this year. and. Uh, I will probably be sucking him into my little setup over there to talk to them about what they do and uh, that kind of uh, thing. I'm going to have a little setup there interviewing some people in the industry and just talking about some different stuff. So Whisker Sticks, much appreciated for that. Y'all check out his stuff. Hit him up with a little message there if you're not familiar with them. They're basically an LED powered light uh, that attaches to your fishing rod. And uh, they're small, lightweight, and uh, very, very uh, affordable and easy to use. Somebody was asking... Are you and Grayson planning to go hunting in different places than your hunt club next year? Planning? No, but would we? Yes. Uh, we're actually looking at some stuff. It kind of depends on what his schedule is. I may take him to Kentucky. Uh, uh, some people, I uh, got some buddies that have offered up some opportunities down in Florida and stuff. It's a matter of making the commitment to do it. So technically we haven't planned to do it, but uh, that's definitely something we'd like to look into doing. Uh, doing. I, I, I'm curious where to go with some of the hunting stuff on the channel uh, because I know most of y'all are in it for the fishing, uh, but for some reason, uh, if you go take a look at my channel right now, and uh, which you are taking a look at my channel right now, but if you look at the videos, uh, my top four videos have nothing to do with fishing whatsoever. Of the three of the four, uh, three of them are hunting videos, and one of them just moved up to the number two spot, and that's the one where Grayson sprays the wasp nest. Uh, that thing started blowing up in the past three weeks, and it's crazy. So uh, I don't, I don't understand. But anyway, my whole point being that some of the hunting stuff, I'm uh, gonna continue to do it. I don't know if it's gonna stay on this channel or a different channel. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go with any of that. So uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. Somebody was asking, can you recommend a good, a bait good bait cast reel for cat, a good catfish for reel for catfish? Well, I think that's what you're asking. The Abu Garcia 6500s are hard to beat. Uh, I've got a bunch of the 5000s, honestly. I've got a bunch of these, the 5000s. That's what I started out with when I was fishing for catfish. Uh, these 5000s work great. Uh, you can add a power handle to them and jazz them up a little bit. It's hard to beat. Hear the, hear the rattle and the homemade demon dragon? It's hard to beat an Abu Garcia 5000. This may make a good thumbnail. There we go. Uh, those are hard to beat. You can find them used, uh, especially if you're in an area that has any carp lakes, uh, because those guys unload those things all the time. They're very popular carp fishing reel. Easy to get parts for, uh, easy to get worked on and repaired. Uh, there's a place, luckily right near me, because we have a lot of carp lakes around here, which are basically pay lakes, like you've heard people talk about, but they um, fish for carp there. Uh, and it's basically organized gambling. Uh, if uh, Jeff Manny is in the feed. He can uh, regale people with stories because he's uh, fished the carp tournaments before. But they fish for carp, and it's a basically legalized gambling thing. Um, and in some aspects, it's not legal. Uh, but uh, that's, there's a lot of them around. So anyway, to answer your question, those are good reels. I start with the Abus, and then I would look at, I've got some videos on my channel of the uh, <coughs> uh, lose reels that are holding up and working real good and then even the ancient mariner reels that I've been trying out and trying to break. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there to be perfectly honest. Uh, you don't have to spend a fortune to get good reels. Uh, there's some people mentioning some stuff in here. Uh, 
There's a bunch of them. The pins are great. Pin makes great reels. Uh, I've got a bunch of their spinning stuff. Somebody mentioned the Cat Max. Uh, they're all good. They're all good reels. It's really if you go with any of those bigger names and those brands, <clears throat> you're not going to go wrong. I just tell people to start kind of with the Abu and then go backwards depending on what your budget is. Um, it's just uh, and Cat Loft Catfish Weekly is in there saying that Abus are the standard, and they really are. They're kind of the baseline of what everything is kind of centered around you can go more expensive uh, more drag uh, lever drags that kind of stuff than the abus you can go cheaper uh, so they're kind of the base the thing about the let's see if this one was actually are these made in sweden i know some are made in china now this is actually made in sweden this is one of the older original swedish made ones i think they started out i think abu garcia started out as a watch company making watches back way back and uh, somehow got into the real thing but well made <clears throat> uh, some of the newer newer stuff uh, I'm not a fan of the BCX series and all that I had some of those come apart on me uh, wasn't a fan of those reels but but yeah it, those are kind of that's kind of your on the very good end and from there you can get you can spend a lot more money or you can spend a lot less uh, but you know that's kind of kind of where it's at uh, you know, I don't fish a lot of drag on my reels. These, I think they say, I haven't really checked the drag on these recently. I, they're, they say they have 12, 14, 15 pounds of drag. I'm running probably seven pounds of drag max on mine. I don't put a lot of drag on them. Uh, I don't overfish them. That's another thing that you will see people doing that will lead to tearing stuff up is that you know these most of these smaller reels in that class are not designed to put a 120 pound braid on and try you know pulling a stump up out of the water with i mean it's just not designed for that so if you fish it within the means of what the reel is designed for uh most of them are gonna last you and you can get them repaired there's a place called the uh, Bass Shack in Shelby, North Carolina. Some people have asked me before about getting reels repaired. <clears throat> They're halfway local. I've dealt with them before. You can actually buy parts through them. They do. Oh, we got a fish on. Sorry about that. We'll get back to that in a minute. We got a fish hooked up over here. Trying to figure out where this one's going. Yeah, I heard a rod creaking. There we go. Looked up, guys. Doing actually a live feed right now over my shoulder. He's just really mad. Over my shoulder, I'm going live. So you get to be a part of two videos. Oh, oh he's wrapped. Decent fish. Trying to see if I need to net it or not. Hmm. Might need to net it. He's not super huge. But I don't think I want to bogey grip it. I think I'm going to need to net it. Stay right there. Stay. Back that drag off a little bit. Oh, the joys of fishing alone. God, this is not that big of a fish. This ain't that big, and that was a pain in the butt. <clears throat> All right, y'all want to play guess the weight? I don't think you can see it. No, you can't see it. Y'all want to play guess the weight? It's a blue. I'll tell you that. It's a blue. Let me get my number in my head. Of course, I get to see it. That that's kind of not fair, right? 
15, okay. We're getting some numbers. We're getting some numbers. All right. By the way, that came on Pinky. Any of y'all that follow my channel know about Pinky. It's an ancient mariner reel that I'm trying to break. Hadn't done it yet. I'm gonna block it so you can't see it, so you can keep guessing. Just kidding, it's not that big. Alright, got everything loose. <clears throat> well, not totally loose. One of the things is when you fish with a pink reel, you need a pink peg float. Hooker's terminal tackle line rattle, making a noise. Alright. Put the little new rig rack scale to use. All right, get your numbers in. Double check it one more time. Uh, there. Everybody still guessing? Same. Same. All right, now I'm going to show it to you. Then I gotta get some pictures of it. You know, and I'm gonna do this the smart way with a glove. Just a tad too big. A tad too big to bogey, even though I could bogey. There it is. Good looking fish. Bam. Good fish. Twenty-three and a half in the net. Take off two from the net, so it's about twenty-one and a half pounds. <clears throat> Easy. Sit. Stay. Look on them. Good color though. We can get the thumbnail out of this one. Long arm it. <gasps> My back can't do that. There it is. Twenty-one and a half. Yeah, y'all nailed it. You're dead on it. Yeah. Some video. Fish. Good one. All right. What do we do with all good fish? Try not to get, try to get your thumb out of their mouth. Then you put them back alive. Boom. Now you can come catch it. Who was the first person to say 21? 21 and a half. Y'all pick a winner.
I'll be back. All right. <clears throat> that one, just for the record, came off the uh, deeper side. I've got a... Uh, Kind of on a channel edge where it drops. Let me kill these. Drops off into the river channel. Uh, got some up shallow, some deep. And uh, that one was on the deeper side. Uh, still no water moving. So, quick look at the rig for any of y'all that came in late <clears throat> or not familiar. I'm just fishing a Santee rig anchored up. That's right. Got some. Uh, pencil weights on here. Dale's tackle is where I got those at. Got the hooker's terminal tackle line rattle. Now this thing floats. And the reason I'm telling you that, I put mine on this side of the bobber. Sinker goes to the bottom, boom, it hits the bottom, cork floats up. This here is gonna float up this line and it's gonna tick right against that peg right there in the float. So if you got some current, it'll spin it, fish hits it, it'll jingle bell. Santa Claus, means Santa's coming to eat, okay? Hooker's terminal tackle, circle hooks. That's a combo, it's pretty simple. You can fish regular Carolina rigs on the bottom, but that's what I'm using. Uh, really comes in good in the current once the uh, water's on. These things will float up, flutter in the water, and it just suspends the bait, so. Right now, I gotta put another piece of bait on. Bear with me. Thanks to Jeff Manning, I've got some gizzard, Jeff. Another thing I did today is I downsized baits on everything. Went to some smaller little chunklets of bait. Caught twice as many fish as I did yesterday. Does that make a difference? I don't know. I was fishing totally different water in a different part of the lake, too. Let me get this back in. We'll come sit down and chat. Slime off of my nose. <clears throat> you know what they say any fish caught live it's a good fish that was nice uh that will be number four it's not gonna win any tournaments but i got a feeling next saturday in lake wiley's tournament if the bite stays the way it is it's gonna be a lot of people happy to have a 21 pound fish in the boat because uh this bike keeps up. It's just tough to catch them. So, what did I miss? Any questions? Jeff Manning, you in there, buddy? If you're in there, that was one of your shads you gave me yesterday. So, actually, it's all I'm fishing with today. Uh, I've got some white perch and crappy with me, but I had those shad. I'm not going to be able to fish for another week, and I knew they weren't going to stay alive. So, I just decided to use all shad today. So that's kind of what the bait size is. Hook size, six alts. Uh, I've got a few eight alts on here, so I was just asking that. Uh, I've got some eight alts on there, but I downsize everything to sixes. Sixes are, they'll work for, you know, I like having that bigger hook, a bigger bait, you know, them jaws and stuff. But, you know, like the, the majority of the fish I hook are in the corner of the mouth where circle hook's supposed to be. And, there's nothing really to get in the way there on a catfish. You know, a catfish has a big, you know, they got that big jawbone there. And if you happen to get one hook there, uh, you'll wish that you had a big wide gap circle hook. But, uh, I, you know, the majority of mine are hooking right there on the outside of the mouth. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Got a good one on video. Uh, let's see who all had any questions. A bunch of people in the chat here. Over 100 people in here. Very nice. Anybody who came in late, my name's Dieter Melhorn. Obviously, you can tell that from the channel, but I'm actually the person whose name's attached to that. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm out fishing for catfish. Anchored up today. Uh, it's uh, 
we're in a slow period of fishing. Any of y'all that follow my channel have probably been tired of hearing that, but it's true. Uh, made some homemade sweet tea before I left. <clears throat> Believe it or not, my sweet tea is not really sweet, sweet. It's kind of on the weak side. Uh, but I keep telling, I keep mentioning that because I know there's a lot of people go fishing and get their butts kicked right now. Uh, myself included, I put a video up the other day of getting skunked. There was a day I didn't catch a fish. So I say that repeatedly, not to make myself look like, oh, it's just um, fishing's bad. But I want everybody to know that it's a tough time to be fishing right now. Uh, if you're brave enough to get out in the cold, uh, you may strike out. So don't feel like the Lone Ranger. So uh, it's it's just it's just par for the course. Somebody's asking how deep am I? I'm sitting in 14 feet of water. Uh, I'll show you. That post right there is in about six feet of water. And that's about 24, 25 feet of water right over the, where that fish came out of. So I'm kind of on a little slope here, uh, just on a little ledge. Uh, a place I fish never. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, every, I did hit one place today that I fish regularly and I never caught a fish. Uh, actually, the past few days I've been hitting. Uh, and posting up in some places I just don't fish. The fishing's bad, I know that. So I figure why not try some places and uh, just try some different stuff, see what's working. So uh, nothing's really working. That's the bottom line. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, it, it's fish is what it is. It comes down to just go fish. So uh, I'm following you around coal, coal. One thing I know is my wife may be at Coles. No, she's at something anyway. Yeah, I just got on here. Have you caught any? And what's the water temperature today? Time outdoors. See that? That right there is a zip tie, and you are being beaten with the zip tie. You just missed a nice fish getting caught. I have caught one on camera. Uh, nice little long river fish blue. Uh, water temperature is 49.7. I'm looking over here at my uh graph right now uh, is pretty much the way it is about anywhere in the lake you can get up into some of the muddy creek backs where the muddy water's been coming in a little bit lower i found some 47 ish 46 and a half yesterday looking around but this is pretty much uh the way it is lake lake wide i'm in the river section i'm in the upper end of lake wiley uh not a place i recommend to go fish right now uh there's I think I may have seen one other cat boat up here all day. There's a tournament next Saturday. So there's a lot of people out doing a lot of pre-fishing right now. Uh, most of them are on the lower end, which is probably smart. This is a, as Big Nasty will tell you, a hero or zero, go big or go home area of the lake. And uh, we came up and fished it in the YouTubers tournament a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we got really lucky and caught the tournament winning fish. Now, uh, with that said, I've fished up here a few times since then and I've not caught anything. That actually, that 21 pounder was the biggest fish that I've caught up here in probably two weeks. So, uh, so there you go. Glenn's Catfishing Adventures asking what tournament next Saturday. That is the Southeastern Catfish Club. Uh, they are probably the best tournament series, run series in the Southeast. And I'll put them up against many in the entire country. Uh, they do a tournament a month starting, I think, in September and go all the way through May. Uh, very run, well run group and uh, I think they're gonna get better and better and better so uh, they have one on Wiley they alternate between Lake Wiley Lake Watery and they do one on Fishing Creek so uh, so yeah that's uh, that's a good series they'll be out here and a lot of guys out here pre-fishing it's, uh, it's gonna be tough I'm glad I'm not fishing the tournament uh, uh, not a good time to be trying to get your heart broke out here. So let's see if there's any other stuff or questions here. Uh, keep losing signal. I'll have to go on and come back in. I think my signal's staying pretty strong for once out here. Uh, have caught any? Yeah, if you got in late, I did just catch a fish. So if you scroll back about five minutes from here, there's actually uh, a little bit of catching action. It's uh. It's nice when you get one on camera. It's nice when you get a decent one on camera. So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, 
It's cool. Still no water moving. It. Uh, we've had an up and down year. You guys uh, in parts of the country that fish rivers, uh, y'all are in a different si scenario, situation than we are. Our fishing here is a little more related to like what you would get on the Tennessee River. Uh, we don't have constant water flow here. Uh, it's intermittent from dam releases. And generally speaking, uh, it's on in the morning in the winter time and then they end up shutting it off halfway through the day. So, but what's happening here over the past uh, almost two months now, we've had a lot of rain and uh, a lot of water moving through the system, lakes up at full pond, and it's went through these repeated cycles over and over and over of getting muddy, lake level going up, ripping water 24 hours a day, about the time that comes to an end another rain front comes through and it's you know it's just cycle after cycle of that and most of us have don't remember seeing anything going on and on and on like this it just goes on this is probably the longest break we've had without significant rain and that's only been two days <laughs> so that's how bad it is it's been i think the other night uh i was dealing with her the past two days out here fishing it was just muddy up in this section it's clear but I'm only a few miles from the uh, dam on the next lake, so they're basically flushing uh, uh, all that water out into here. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's tough. It's going to make for a tough tournament next week. Uh, those guys are, uh, in, unless things just stay stable all week long, uh, it could be some tough fishing. But it's some of the best fishermen around. Uh, the, definitely the best fishermen in the Carolinas are going to be fishing that tournament and just like with the ice bowl yesterday on Kerr Lake, uh, they're gonna find fish. You put that and you know, they have got close to 200 boats. They're gonna have, there'll probably be 50 boats in this tournament this weekend. Somebody's gonna find some fish and uh, it, it's people have gotten better and better and better at fishing this lake. And uh, somebody will somebody will catch some piggies, so. Uh, what's that? I've been a rich looking lake, oh, it says I'm gonna get away with it. What am I using for bait? Running late fishing is asking. It's all gizzard chad today. Uh, one of my buddies on here, Reeling the Blues, Team Reeling the Blues, Jeff Manning. I think he's in the chat somewhere. He gave me some uh, gizzard chad yesterday. I seen him out on the water. And uh, he had a, a bunch extra and uh, brought some over. And uh, I'm just using all that today. I've got some perch and some crappie back here. But uh, I'm just keeping those alive for once I get past this week. Uh, the YouTube tournament was my first one. I liked it. Gonna try some Team Wampus Cat. That's cool, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I like the format, and uh, I like a one fish tournament. And I know people are gonna argue. And here we're gonna. Uh, it's gonna be. You've heard of Louder with Souder. Uh, it's gonna or Louder with Crowder. Is it Louder with Souder? Louder with Crowder. Louder with Crowder. People are gonna say one fish tournaments all luck. Prove it to me. Prove to me that it takes more skill to catch three fish and win than it does to catch one monster. Prove that. Prove that. Make that argument. Prove it. Uh, I think what happens is, because one fish tournaments are so rare, uh, the YouTubers tournament was, the Ice Bowl is a one fish tournament, uh, most people are not are not in the mentality of fishing for one big fish. They are in the mentality of fishing for several good fish. So, uh, so anyway, that's, uh, I think the mentality would shift in the way people fish if, if a tournament, I think the mentality changes when it's a one fish tournament. So that's my take on it. So somebody said, uh, what was that? Big fish rarely wins the tournament. Not always the case. There's a lot of them where, uh, there's a lot of them that end up winning tournaments. A lot of people have the big fish in it. But uh, I guess another argument to be made there would be, why would you stop at three, four, five fish? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I gotta hear a better argument than the big fish rarely wins the tournament. Well, yeah, that's because you're, you've set the, the, the bar 
different. Uh, maybe that guy was a better fisherman than the guy who parked in the right place and got lucky and caught three fish. Might have just parked in the right place where there were some biting fish. Hey, uh, Big Nasty and I, okay? I, I, I'll admit it. We hit three, four, five places. Zero. We pulled up in the right place. Boom. Not only did we catch the biggest fish of the tournament in a single fish tournament, we had enough other fish that we would have won it if it was a three fish tournament. Is that skill, luck? We parked in the right place, that's for sure. Uh, it, you know, how much of that's luck? A good bit of it. Uh, a good bit of it is that we decided to stop there instead of going somewhere else. Uh, so I don't know. I, I like the, here's why I like the one fish tournament. I like the one fish idea because I think one, I think it makes, keeps the sport cheaper. Uh, I think it's cheaper to have one fish tournaments. Uh, I think it keeps the cost of tournaments, the, the rising cost of tournament fishing a little more in check. Uh, second, we're not dealing with two pound bass here, guys. We're dealing with big fish. Uh, you know, you look at any of these saltwater tournaments and you know, where they're fishing for big fish, they're not bringing in five of them or four of them or three of them. So. I think we're going to see, I hope we're going to see a change in that direction moving forward. So that was my rant for a minute. Uh, I hope to get a tournament next year. Backwoods, I hope you get to fish one. Uh, I know when I first started out, I wanted to fish them and uh, fished a ton of them. Still like to do them now and then. They're fun. Uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're fun. Uh, but I... Uh, I also realize there's a lot to do them and to do them right. So uh, it's a lot of work to do it. Somebody was asking about the avos and the salt. I sure do. I fish uh, when I get down to the beach. Uh, I use the, usually it's the 7,000s that I use shark fishing down there. And uh, they work fine. They work fine. I just wash them off with fresh water after I get done. And uh, yeah, they're good to go. Clean them halfway regularly. And uh, I don't have any problem with corrosion or anything else on them. It's just, you know, a point of taking the time to, uh, uh, you know, wash everything off. Running late fishing. Love the U2 tournament. Uh, dude, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad people like that. James from uh, Patriot Catfishers of America is the man who put it on. I think I seen him in the feed here earlier. Uh, was uh, very cool to do that. That took a lot of work. I think he learned very quickly that doing a tournament is uh, a lot of work to it. So uh, it, it's a lot of organization, getting stuff in order, dealing with people, talking to people, making everything happen. And man, uh, we all appreciate him taking the time to do that. That was uh, very impressive. Uh, Richard Warsco was out there helping with the uh, MCing on it. And uh, I was telling James the other day, it's like, dude, you, you needed at least a couple more people. Uh, putting on a tournament uh, is it, not easy. and. The biggest thing is dealing with the weigh-in. You know, you've got uh, to do it right. It's nice to have somebody keeping track of weights, somebody talking, directing, telling people what's going on, uh, somebody weighing the fish. It really, it's nice to have four people out there handling all that stuff. And uh, it's a it's a tough deal. You fish the Watery Dam in Camden, or is there another one? Katie's asking about Watery. I don't fish down at the dam very much, uh, especially if you're talking below it. I don't fish any below it. Uh, the Watery area that I fish is usually from about Colonel Creek North, and uh, love Watery. Uh, it's a great lake. It's uh, definitely a more of a sportsman's lake down there than where I fish here. This is becoming a little more a little too populated. Uh, watery can be bad in the summer, but it's nowhere as bad as this. But I love watery. It's very diverse. It's got great bass fishing, great crappie fishing, great striper fishing. I didn't say great striper fishing, good striper fishing, and uh, great catfish. So uh, it's, a, it's a very cool lake. It's not horribly overpopulated yet, and uh, I like fishing down there. So uh, let's see what we got in here. Watery dam, hey dam. Sorry, I'm scrolling through the thing here. I got them bass fishing. I'm still learning the thing. It's been fun so far. Getting choppy. Hey, Chris Hovis. He's uh, chiming in here on the thing. It's probably your phone, Betty. Mine's perfect. No, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, somebody was asking or uh, talking about bass fishing. Yeah, uh, dude, if you're fishing, it's awesome. It don't matter if you're bass fishing, crappie fishing, striper fishing, brim fishing. Uh, it's fun. And... You know, it, it, there's something primal. Uh, you, you, 
it, there's just something primal about it. And you, you, whether you're watching that bobber go down and you're catching bluegill, I get as addicted and eat up with catching bluegill for bait as I do fishing for big fish. I mean, it's just, it's, it's probably more, I'm probably more intense and nerve wracking, racked catching bluegill cause you're like pitching the bobber out there and you're waiting for them to hit and you're anticipating it, picking out where you're going next. It's crazy. But the whole point being is, uh, dude, it's fun. It, it's, it's, it's great to be out. Uh, it's great to be out even on a cold, dreary looking day like this. Uh, it's just fun. So glad you're into it. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, if you're young and just getting started, that's awesome. You'll be doing it the rest of your life, I guarantee it. Uh, if you're older and just getting into it, welcome. Uh, you're going to enjoy it too, and you're going to go, dang, I should have done this my entire life. So, uh, so that's cool. Uh, I don't mind to set out in a few weeks. I was saying something about putting out a trot line out. Yep, those are, uh, those are fun and interesting to see what's going on uh, with the fishing. Uh, just make sure you follow whatever your laws are in your area because uh, different places have different rules on where you can set those things and how you can run them and all that kind of stuff. Nathan's asking about fishing Kerr. I fished Kerr one time. I fished there in the Ice Bowl the first year that North Carolina won it. And uh, that was the last time I've been up there and I hate it because it's really a cool lake. Uh, I want them to get back up there, but it's just far enough of a drive that you really have to commit a couple of days to, uh, uh, to, to staying up there. It's, uh, the fishing's really good. Uh, it's probably one of the greatest chances of catching a really large fish. Uh, that's water going out my drain. Anywhere in the country up there. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a really, really great lake. So. I was going to say, we need to have a sit down at the conference. Uh, Hit me up if you guys are going to be at the conference. Uh, I plan to be there. Uh, I will be there. I mean, good Lord willing, the creek don't rise. Uh, I will be there. Looking forward to it. Going to try and get a, shoot a lot of content out there. Talk to a lot of people and try to do some live streams from out there. I'm still uh, uh, hoping that the connectivity out there is good. Uh, that's my only concern is being able to get out. Uh, just with everything with Wi-Fi and everything else. So hopefully it's good. So we'll see what happens. Well, for now, I am going to jump off of here. I have sat on here uh, a good long time, caught a fish, and uh, I appreciate you guys joining in. Those of you that made a donation to the channel, thank you very much. Uh, it's going to buy more airtime, so I keep doing these things. And uh, look for some videos this week. Uh, I got a couple that I'm going to be putting out on some planter boards. And uh, let's see, just more cold weather, winter fishing struggles. There'll be many videos on those. So hopefully that will at least ease your mind uh, if you're, uh, if you're uh, fishing. So Caleb, thanks for subscribing, buddy. I appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Uh, hopefully you like the content. Always feel free to jump in, comment, smash thumbs up, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, hopefully you learned something. If you have some questions, always put them in the comment section. I try to read every comment. I try to respond to every one of them. Uh, sometimes some get by me, but I try to respond to them if it's saying just a uh, hey and howdy. So, uh, so anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to jump off here. Y'all have a great Sunday, and make sure you're on Catfish Weekly tomorrow night, uh, Monday night here on YouTube, Catfish Weekly. I'll be over in the chat section, just like you guys are over in the chat section right now, and we can chat it up and talk and make fun of Lyle and Doc, whoever the uh, other guests are that are